Welcome to the Bet MGM Studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. I'm Mike Keith. Mike Vrabel will be joining us shortly as he's currently detained by ghosts, goblins, and gremlins. He is continuing a Titans tradition that has spanned 25 plus years. Tonight is the night where every Titans staff member, every coach, every player, can bring their children to trick-or-treat here at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. Each position room is decorated, and the rookies are responsible for coming up with the candy. Next Tuesday is Halloween, and with the Titans playing two nights later in Pittsburgh, most everyone on the football side will miss taking their kids trick-or-treating. So, this night is a big deal and has been since the team moved to Nashville and Mike Vrabel loves the event. So he is finishing his duties and will join us momentarily. Today has already been a busy day for Mike and the football team as they return from four days off to start preparations for Sunday's game at Nissan Stadium with the Atlanta Falcons. There are two top stories for the Tennessee Titans today. First, who plays quarterback on Sunday against the Falcons. Second, the trade of safety Kevin Byard to the Philadelphia Eagles. Here's what Mike Vrabel had to say about the move during his press conference earlier today. Just want to thank Kevin, you know, his family. I think the personal relationship that I have with Kevin uh, goes well beyond uh, football. Uh, We know that there's a business side of this, and uh, sometimes, you know, you have to make tough decisions. Certainly was was one of them. Rand and I are trying to um, continue to grow the team and continue to do what we think is going to be best now and, and in the long run uh, to, to add to our roster, to strengthen our roster. Um, and this was an opportunity to do that. Um, you know, again, just can't thank Kevin enough for the personal um, relationship and you know, what he's meant to this organization uh, on the field, off the field. Uh, these things are, are never easy. Um, but hopefully if you, if you handle them with, with class and integrity and respect and, you know, honesty, you know, hopefully it, it works out for everybody. We'll discuss the quarterback situation and the decision to trade Kevin Byard later when Mike Vrabel joins us on this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show. But next, first round pick Peter Skaronsky has been exactly what the Titans thought he would be. It comes as no surprise to anyone, especially his proud parents. Meet the Skaronskis next in our epic Western Spotlight as the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek continues after the break. When the 2023 NFL draft rolled around, Peter Skaronsky was invited to Kansas City as he was a sure first round pick. Peter was certain to join his legendary grandfather, former Packer Bob Skaronsky, as an NFL offensive lineman. So why not celebrate at the draft? Peter said, no thank you. Instead, he and his family hosted a large party at Peace Pizza and Brewery in Chicago. Because you knew Peter was going to be drafted in the upper half of the first round. So was it a hard decision to not go to Kansas City? and be involved in all of that? We were surprised and, frankly, jealous. Pizza in Chicago sounded great to us, but we were even more intrigued when we found out it was New Haven-style pizza in Chicago. So we hit the road to experience Peace Pizza on our own, and we had Peter's parents, Bob and Ann Skaronsky, as our hosts for this week's Epic Western Spotlight. 
All right, so here we are. Yeah, yes. We're at Peace Pizzeria in Chicago. Yes. Why was this the perfect place? Peace opened in 2001. Peter was born in July. I think it opened in May or June. We had his christening gathering here. It's always been part of our family and a little bit of family um, history in terms of it being New Haven style pizza and Bob's dad being from New Haven and just a, you know, obviously Skaransky's love pizza too. <laughs> <laughs> and love light. food generally. And like beer. And Don't beer. Don't forget that. Yeah. We're good with that yeah. too. What's your best memory of the night, Bob? There's a, there was a couple of teams that we really were hoping that, that he didn't go in that direction. And when they both went by him, his head coach, Pat Fitzgerald, <laughs> looked at me and said, you just won the draft. <laughs> Peter had such strong um, pre-draft um, interaction with uh, Rand Carthon and Mike Vrabel that um, he, uh, he really was he was really hoping that that was what was going to happen. And I would say for me, really, maybe the obvious point is when he turned around, he was on the phone and he turned around and the look on his face when he said Tennessee. I mean, he was just so genuinely happy. And what came flooding back to me was just the memory of talking to Peter after the combine. And really the entire conversation was dominated by meeting uh, Coach Rabel and Ran, and just the whole um, connection he felt with the team at that point. I thought that was that was really the first thing I thought of. Bob, when did you start to think Peter could be a good enough football player that he could follow your dad into the NFL? I would say uh, his sophomore year, um, he before they played Michigan, he was sick as a dog. That Saturday the opposition was Aiden Hutchinson and um, David Ajabo. So I felt like um, after that game that his game was good enough to go to the next level. That would be a tipping point for me in terms of his future, that, that particular game. I was so, so thrilled for him to have an opportunity to play in college, to do something that he loved and mm -hmm. really um, embrace the whole team and um, you know playing in a D1 situation in the Big Ten, amazing. Now, I will say that my dad was a little more bullish than I was on the whole thing because when he was an eighth grader, my dad came to a game and, you know, grade school football and, you know, five plays into the game, he just looks and he goes, Bob, that's a Big Ten tackle out there, an eighth grader. And I go, you know, I didn't, you know, I, I took with a grain of salt, I guess, but he was pretty, uh, pretty prescient in his uh, analysis, to be honest. And I, I guess there's that would be the only disappointment of what's happened in the last year or so is him not being able to see that kind of thing go yeah. through. But, you know, he's still he's up there watching. Most important note from that trip, New Haven style pizza is amazing. If you ever have a chance to visit Peace in Chicago, do that. Speaking of good things in New England or from New England, Mike Vrabel had a great bye weekend back in his old haunt and he allowed us to go with him to see it all. Next on The Mike Frable Show, presented by Seek. If I ask Mike Vrabel about his playing career, he blows by it. Mike's point has always been that what he did as a player does not help the Tennessee Titans win games. When Mike found out that he was being inducted into the New England Patriots Hall of Fame, he knew that he would have to drop his guard and reminisce about the eight fantastic seasons that he spent in Foxborough. Mike Vrabel headed north last weekend for the ceremony, and he allowed our colleagues Todd Gray and Jack Mummert to give you a behind-the-scenes look at his amazing weekend. Hey guys, it's Coach Brave. Just uh, landed in Boston. Uh, it's great to be back. Uh, heading, making a trip down to Foxborough, so. Uh, We'll pass a lot of familiar sights, and we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thank you. Yeah, it brings back memories of you know coming back from the airport or uh, going to the mall with the kids. You know, I think that's probably uh, what I think about now. There's a Brazil jersey. Oh my congratulations! It's a nice looking jersey, Carter. Yes, we got one. That's the point. Here we go. Uh, I'm Ali. Love you, man. That's him. <laughs> How are you, buddy? Good to see you. None of that was there. None of that was there. Ed, hi, Matthew. Good to see you. You buddy. too, buddy. God, you look How good. How are you? Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh,
Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming 2023 Patriot Hall of Fame inductee, Mike Vrabel! Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 34th member of the Patriots Hall of Fame, Mike Vrabel. Never forget. You, know, you get a call and you tell, you know, I was in the last year of my deal. You know, when you're 33 years old and you're in the last year of your deal, you, you, you try to get some more security. And so it was like, hey, you know, would, would like to, to talk about a contract extension or, or maybe, you know, I, I could probably end up somewhere else. Be careful what you ask for because you end up somewhere else. That's how that goes. <laughs> I'm very appreciative of this. So thank you to the Patriot organization. Thank you to Mr. Kraft, the Kraft family. Uh, thank you, Bill. Thank you to my, my teammates. This is an unbelievable honor. Thank you. This is great. I think the, the hard part's over. And, uh, you know, this will be fun. This will be great to, to be able to enjoy with my family and uh, with uh, friends and the teammates and everybody. appreciate what I did here and with the teammates that we had and the coaches and just the success that we had and I don't know if I've ever really reflected back on it I just kind of moved on and then I figured whenever the time was right and it just kind of seemed like the time's right welcome back to the Mike Vrabel show and the coach is here by the way, Todd Gray, Jack Mumbert, fantastic job documenting the weekend. They were awesome. It, I, I mean, that. Uh, thank you for letting us do that. I'm looking at you standing next to those football players, and I'm thinking, that's a pretty good group of football players that you were hanging around right there. That's got to be it, impressive to be part of that club. It was. And, uh, you know, just like I told the fans there and I told everybody there, like, th this is – that's what I want to try to emulate here. And then I come to work and try to – try to put that together because I know how special it was uh, with, with those teams and the success. And, and that's, that's, I'm never going to stop trying to do that here. Good stuff. Thank you again yeah. for letting us do that, and congratulations. Thank you. All right. As Mike Vrabel would say, it's time to get back to business, the business of knocking off the Atlanta Falcons. When we come back, we move forward with the six-pack presented by SeatGeek. The Mike Vrabel Show continues. Welcome back to the Bet MGM Studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. SeatGeek also sponsors the six pack, and usually we show highlights, but of course the Titans didn't play last weekend. So I've got six questions for Mike Vrabel. First of all, let's start with the, the Kevin Byard trade. Can you share anything about the process that led you and the team to trade Kevin Byard to Philadelphia? Well, I think you just try to add and, and try to look at strengthening your roster and the future and, and, and what we're trying to do. And, and obviously it's win consistently, it's win championships and um, felt like that there was value there. Um, <clears throat> tried to listen to um, Philly and, and tried to you know, ultimately do what was best for, for the football team. Um, that may not seem like it today, um, but, but hopefully that, that'll be the case in the long run. And a lot of respect for Kevin and personally, professionally, what he's done since I've been here. Um, had some great conversations. So, uh, just he, he just, a, I want to tell you, he's a, he's a class individual. Everything we, we saw here, I would say even more so. You obtained two draft picks in the trade. You also obtained safety Terrell Edmonds. What do you hope he can potentially add, and where can he fit on this defense? Well, he's played in the league. Yeah, he's played. He's, he's started and, you know, has good good range back there. He stays on his feet and seems to be a sure tackler. And So we'll get him brought up to speed as, as soon as we possibly can. And he showed up with a great attitude, uh, played Sunday night, and was out there with us uh, getting some work in. So ex excited just to have the person. With Byard's departure, you obviously have an open spot at safety. Who do you look to fill that spot, at least initially? 
Well, I mean, we'll see how much Terrell knows. We, we'll see how much, uh, you know, if, if Molden's availability and Shai Carter and Matt Jackson. I mean, those are the safeties that we have on the roster. And, you know, Dane's on the practice squad. So, um, you, you know, we'll, we'll have 11 out there and make sure that they're, they're flying around and, and, and they know what to do. Does safety Amadi Hooker's role change with Kevin Byard's departure at all? Um, no, I mean, I think his leadership may increase in that room. I mean, being a, a veteran player in that room. Um, but what we're going to ask him to do on the football field, I don't think that anything will, will change. We'll need his impactfulness when we can get it in ball disruption and everything else. Let's turn to quarterback. What is the status of Ryan Tannehill as we sit here tonight? Well, Ryan didn't practice, so uh, today he was unavailable. That, that may change tomorrow, and then we'll reevaluate re evaluate where things are after that. If Ryan can't go at the end of the week, would you announce a starter for Sunday's game with Atlanta? Would you anticipate doing that? Um, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that the, you know, the, the, the players may know. I think that, you know, I'm, I'm positive that both quarterbacks will play in, in some capacity. So um, we'll see where Ryan's at, and then we'll see what, what, what we do end up doing with the game plan. All right. So that's the six-pack of questions for Mike Vrabel. We now turn to our youth for our kids. Thank kid. God. We now turn to our, it really hurts. We now turn to our youth for this edition of Kids Ask Coach Vrabel. Aaliyah has tonight's question, Coach. Coach Vrabel, was it weird sitting in the box with the Patriots on wasn't it weird Aaliyah. sitting in the box with a Patriots owner? Aaliyah, it was only weird that I didn't get booed. Usually I'm, I'm the, the last times that I've been back there, I've gotten booed and I didn't get booed. Um, first time that I've ever been in that box, uh, ever. So didn't know how to get there. Took an elevator up and, and it and opened up into it. But uh, everything went pretty quick. And uh, it was good to see a lot of friends and coaches and, and former players and teammates. What do owners talk about during the game? Should we go for it on fourth and one at the minus 34? Why can't we stop the quarterback sneak? All the same things I said, you know what I mean? And I was like, well, let's probably punt and see if we can play some defense. And at that, you know, same thing every other fan says. Is it hard to watch a game like that for you without putting the coach hat back on? Uh, again, I was thinking about just the entire day and taking right. in a lot of things and um, halftime and you know what what I would try to say in the 60 seconds that I had and but uh, it was good just to watch and you know, I was happy for those coaches and players that they were able to win. You know, still got a lot game. of friends up there. Yep, that was a good ball game for sure. All right, when we come back, it's time for Mike Vrabel's Nissan Keys to Success as the Titans get ready to take on the first place team in the NFC South, the Atlanta Falcons. Those keys are next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek. Stay with us. This is Stadium in 60. A quick update on the Titans' new stadium. Yes, the new Titans stadium will have a roof, but this will not be one of the old school dark domes. Oh no, this roof will be translucent, and the style was chosen to give the new Titan Stadium a totally indoor-outdoor feel. Um, I've told people, look, you can leave your umbrella at home, but you still might need to bring your sunglasses on a sunny day because it's that type of, of sunlight ambiance that comes in, and uh, it's, it's a really, really special feeling, a great, a great way to watch an NFL football game. This feels totally different. This feels like you're outside. And we're also gonna have garage doors uh, on the outside walls so that on a nice day in Nashville, we can have those garage doors open. You'll get a cross breeze throughout the building and you'll still have the sunlight coming through. So it's really the best of both worlds. It's an indoor experience. You're protected from the elements. You're not gonna have games that get delayed or canceled because of lightning. And yet you still get the benefits of those, those outdoor feelings. For the latest news, visit titansnewstadium.com. Welcome back. To the Mike Vrabel Show. Time for the Nissan Keys to Success. Mike Vrabel, can you run the three down for us? Absolutely. Very you know, Mike, this Arthur Smith coach football team, they're going to run the football. They've got three great backs. We've got to stop the run. We've got to set an edge. We've got to swarm. Can't have any cracks in the wall. And we have to tackle. 
They, these guys are great. They run hard. Algier runs hard. Robinson. So we got to be great tacklers. You know, offensively, we've got to stay efficient. And, and if we get in third and long, we have a tough time being great in punt coverage and making sure we're casting the net and, and, and doing what we're supposed to do in special teams. And you know exactly what's coming from Arthur. That's good fundamental football, period. It, it is, and it's going to be a great challenge. They're playing well, and, and we got to stand up to them. All right, ready to be back at home wearing those Oilers uniforms come Sunday. Titans and the Falcons kickoff is set for 12.02. We're on your favorite Titans radio station at 11 with Titans Countdown. For Mike Vrabel, Mike Keith says thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.